today, we have a chance to meet world-famous Joel Sebunjo, who plays an instrument called a kora. Let's find out how he uses sound to make meaningful music. Hello, Joel. Welcome to Engine. Hello, thank you. Wow, can you tell us a little bit about this instrument and where it comes from? Uh, this instrument is called the kora. It's uh, from the western part of Africa and it's one of the oldest African instruments. It's a string instrument. It's made from fishing lines. In, in Senegal and Mali and Gambia, people eat a lot of fish. And these are, this is the string they use to go to fish. This is what we call the neck. Then we have the strings. This is what makes the sound, the strings. Then we have the bridge. We have something here. This is the heart of this instrument. The strings have to sit on this wooden part so that the sound can vibrate. This is what causes the vibration. The kora has 21 sounds, and every single sound is different. What are those silver knobs for? These are called tuning pegs. This is what we use to change the sound of every note. Because an instrument, before you play an instrument, you have to make sure it is in tune. Tune means it has to be at the right pitch. What is a pitch? <laughs> a pitch is the highness or lowness of sound. Okay. And every single string here has a unique sound that we need to have it sound like. The length of the strings determines the, the, the pitch, the highness or the lowness of the, the sound. If you look here, this is, the, this is one of the longest strings on this panel and it's the, low, it's the lowest. And this one is the shortest and it's the highest. The longer, the lower the sound. The shorter, the higher the pitch. But also, the thickness of the strings determines the, the heaviness. This is the thickest string we have and it's the heaviest sound we have. It is the best. And this is the lightest and it is the sharpest. What makes our African sound unique? Uh, in Africa, the nature is, is very much part of the music because normally music is performed in the communities and when people are singing and dancing and clapping, you can hear the birds screaming, you can see the cows moving around the village, you can, you can see the chicken running out up in the compound. Mm -hmm. And also when they're making the instruments, they're using things from the nature and sometimes they try to imitate the, the sounds of the nature. You see this instrument, it's made from local wood, from, from the forest, mm. you know, somewhere. Yeah. Some instruments have the skin of the cow. When they cut the cow for meat, <laughs> they don't just throw the skin. Yes. They'll put the skin to make a drum. What tips would you give our engine viewers if they want to learn the kora or any other instrument? Our dear viewers, it's very simple. The first step is have the instrument at home. When you get the instrument at home, then just practice, listen to a lot of music, and then discover the instrument, and also share with your friends. You can have your instrument, have your guitar, then get your friend in the neighborhood with a drum, then you play as a group. The more you play as a group, the more you discover the sounds of these instruments. Not so? Yes. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so You're much, welcome. Joel Sebunjo. You're welcome. Please keep on playing that beautiful sound. I'll play for you a tune from, uh, from the Gambia called Banile and enjoy it. You can also clap if you want. <laughs> <laughs>
Wari e modu filambe tila, sani e modu filambe tila. Banile, sankomani bankoman banile. Hey. Wow. <laughs>